What is up, everybody? My name is Justin. This is Forever Self-Employed. In today's video, I'm joined with a special guest. I got Mike Vidan here with me, and we're going to be talking about 52 ways you guys can make some money uh, this winter, this Christmas time. Uh, I don't know why I said Christmas time. It just, That's I guess weird. I just, I just, I, can we edit that out? No, we can't. This is live. Uh, we're going to be talking about 52 ways to make money this winter. Uh, they're not all service-based businesses, but um, we found a great list, and we're going to go through them in this video. This video is going to be brought to you by Quote IQ. If you guys want to win a pressure washing business starter kit, check out the first link in the comment section and the description. All you got to do is download Quote IQ, write a review, and send us a picture, and you'll be entered to win a four-gallon-a-minute pressure washer, uh, 100 feet of hose, and a 20-inch surface cleaner. What a great deal, huh, Mike? That is a great deal, Justin. That's pretty good. Okay, sweet. So with that out of the way, should we just jump right into the list? Well, yeah. And I think, I don't know if we were live when you were actually doing the intro because it went live and then I think you were halfway through about what we're actually going to do on the video. Okay. So in today's video, I think I've already said this four times, we're going through 52 ways to make money this winter. And some of them are service business based, other, you know, some of them are not. So we're just going to give you guys a ton of ideas for things that you could do this winter to make some money. We got a couple of familiar faces in the audience. Uh, Dewey's here. What's up, Dewey? Of course he is. Hello, Dewey. Kurt Seeker is here. What's up, dogs? Caden Pierce. Mad Mike and Justin crushing it. That's what we're here to do, baby. Mad Mike. Okay, so the list is 52. I don't know if it's ranked from uh, worst to best, but we're going to start at 52 and work our way down to number one. Um, so number 52, Mike, is hand-knit Christmas stockings. I think this is a great idea if you're into knitting and if you are proficient at knitting. Um, if not, then it could be very time consuming and probably not a great, um, you know, wintertime business to increase revenue. Maybe. Should we do a screen share on this? Let's try this. Well, I've not seen the list yet. All right. I can't show Mike the list because Mike is reacting to these live. So hand knit Christmas stockings. Everybody. Wait, knows so should I close about. my eyes? Well, no, I'm, I'm only showing you the one that I'm showing you. So, oh, okay. like, you can only see 52 right now. All right. You can only see number 52. All right. Everybody knows how important stockings are to Christmas celebration. Stockings are filled with delicious treats. So if you enjoy working with your hands, you would make a great business owner. Uh, pro tip, it doesn't matter what business concept you choose. You have to follow a process to start any kind of business. Here's a step-by-step -step guide. All right. Number 51, Mike, skateboard company. Yes. And I think if you're looking at a uh, just maybe a wintertime activity, um, probably starting a skateboard company isn't the best. I think it probably takes a little bit more time than, you know, a few months to uh, to get a, a, an entire skateboard company off the ground. I would I would imagine so. Um, it's difficult to find someone who will sell you a skateboard if you love them, no matter if you want to ride it indoors or outdoors. Um, I wouldn't recommend skateboard company. I got to tell you, Google's really letting us down on this one. Number fifty, gift wrapping. I've actually seen people providing this service, and I uh, think this is this this could be this could be something, right? My gift wrapping. What do you think about this as a service that people can provide? I think it's a great service. Uh, I hate wrapping gifts. Um, anytime I wrap a gift, it looks horrible. And so, if there was somebody out there that I could hire to wrap my gifts, I would definitely give them my money and uh, would be very much appreciative of that service. It's kind of interesting though. I don't know if like, you know, you bring the, I guess you have to bring all the presents to their house and they or their house or wherever they're wrapping all the gifts at. I, I, maybe this, a mobile gift wrapping service. Dude, that's not a bad idea. You come yeah. in with just like all kind of different papers that they can pick from. Exactly. All right. I got to tell you, this was the best one on the list, list so far. Gift wrapping at number 50 um, is the best one on the list so far. I wouldn't get into it because I'm not a very good rapper, but, I, you know, someone else. Actually, I've heard you rap. You can look <laughs> Justin up on SoundCloud. You can start a gift wrapping, wrapping business on a part-time basis, which is great for women and students. This business is women and students. That seems kind of uh, sexist. The yeah, service I'm not a big fan of that, Google. The service will be delivered right to your doorstep. I think that's kind of a play on words there. Okay, sweet. Gift wrapping. You guys should definitely check that out. Professional organizer. People usually need help cleaning and organizing their spaces after the winter has ended. If you are a professional organizer, you may be able to help them out. Mike, what do you think about professionally organizing people's stuff? I think it's a great uh, – I think that could be a great side hustle. 
I hate that word, but I just used it. But yeah, definitely it could be something that is uh, advantageous, right? Like there's no overhead, really. It's just you and the vehicle to get to the person's house. A little bit of uh, marketing, getting your name out there, promoting the fact that you are a professional organizer and really what constitutes being a professional organizer, right? Like I think if you're just proficient enough um, and you hold yourself in a, a professional manner, does that entail being a professional organizer? I think so. So I think that could be something uh, that could they could work for some folks. I'm just going to say this. My Facebook ad strategy would be excellent for pretty much every single service that you guys could provide on this list because it's interruption-based marketing uh, rather than intent-based, which would be people searching on Google because it's a little bit hard to rank on you know, personal organizer. It's more so better to just pop in front of somebody mm-hmm. with like a before and after picture of a, you know, a cabinet, you know what I mean? That got organized really well. Right, Mike, wouldn't you say so? Yeah, I agree. So if you guys are interested, check out my Facebook ad strategy. <laughs> Let's get back into the list. Um, and the ad strategy crushes with any, any niche service that people are not um, advertising for. So I bet it would right, well, and grabbing as well. I just made a video the other day about this exact thing, right? About disruption marketing. And uh, hey, pop me up so everybody can see me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But disruption marketing, right? So things that are not easily Googleable, right? Like if if somebody's looking for, say, Christmas wrapping, maybe, I don't know, um, knitting, right? Stockings, right? Things like that. Those are things that people probably aren't typically going to be Googling, right? But if they're on Facebook, if they're on other social media, and all of a sudden they see something that like, oh, someone can come and organize my, my closet or someone's going to come and wrap all of our gifts. Like that's disruption, right? Something that ro- probably Google ads isn't going to really do great for, but uh, disruption marketing and Facebook ads and, and, you know, boosting posts is something that's of, of real value. So let's go on. Absolutely. Uh, Liver of life says, Hey guys, what are these guys talking about? We're talking about 52 ways to make money in the winter, different services that you can offer. Is that the Liver King? That might be the Liver King. Liver King is here with us. How That's about awesome. T-shirts? Maybe so. Um, you can quote a quote IQ T-shirt. That's okay. right. They said easy to start. Google must think women and students uh, can't do hard things. We should protest at their headquarters. I completely. I'm, agree. I'm on the way down there right now. <laughs> Considering this is on Google right now, we think Google's great. great. Yeah, Google's I love Google. Great uh, okay, let's do a screen share back over. Let's get back into the list. That was 49, 48 storage facility service. The storage facility service is a business that deals with keeping materials that will not be used in the winter for those who do not have enough space in their homes in order to store them. This is a horrible idea. This is terrible. Yeah, don't do that. Terrible. Don't (laughs) just boop. Let's go to 47. You rent your closet, Mike. That might not be a bad idea. Yeah. Yeah. You could maybe do like an Airbnb, right? Like your garage could be someone's storage unit. I mean, that we that you could be onto something there, right? Like, well, yeah, I don't know. You'd have charge a premium because their space is a premium. That's true. All right. Premium. We're going to ask that idea. 48 is no good. Um, custom ornament sales. A popular item that customers tend to purchase mainly during the winter is the holiday ornament. Uh, you may be able to come up with your own unique version of the ornament or even customize it so that it is unique for every individual. I think if you're crafty, uh, this is a great, (laughs) this is something great. I just, you know, I, when I look at this, I'm not looking at something for a hobby. I'm looking at something to generate income. And when something is not scalable, then I don't think it's really worth the time that you're going to, you know, put into it. Like how many ornaments can you make and how many can you sell and what can you sell them for? So, while I think this might be fun to make for your grandma, um, not selling. So next. Okay. Excellent. Uh, uh, Louis, I think it's Lewis. He said, well, I'll be able to rewatch this later. I have school right now. Absolutely. Lewis, this will be live on the channel. You can come back to it later. Another thing I want to mention for every single one of these services that we are telling you guys about today, they're perfect for, uh, using quote IQ to keep up with customers, send estimates, send invoices, collect payments. And you can do all that through the free version of the app. So if you haven't downloaded quote IQ already, check it out. That'll be the first link in the comment section. And, the and guess what else? What? We have a 14 day free trial on the premium version. So you can try out almost every aspect of the app for free. So that's awesome. Too. Absolutely. Back to the list. Here we go. Um, number 46, furnace repair services. This is so a horrible idea. Horrible <laughs> idea. Unless you are proficient with furnace repair. 
I'm just gonna I'm gonna make a list of the ones that we thought were good. So I think we what, have Christmas like, wrap. Gift wrapping was good. Okay, gift wrapping, and I'm then at the end was the summer. Wait, what is it, Mike? I'm making a list already. Okay, gift wrapping. Did we think professional organizer? That was, I mean, that was kind of. That was actually pretty good. Okay, organizer, dude. I mean, you could pay someone to come in and just organize your closet. I mean, I mean, your closet or your garage or whatever. And power matter. washing, power washing chick says custom ornaments are a big deal during holidays, but you have to be selling unique ornaments. Yes, and but it goes back to. Um, how many can you sell and it be profitable and worth your time, right? This is this is something else to think about when we're looking at these things. Okay, so these are all, you know, they're, some of these are fun ideas, funny ideas, whatever the case is. But you have to think about, you know, your time and your focus and exchanging time for value, right? Or, or money for your time. And by that, I mean, if you're going to spend X amount of hours every single day making ornaments, you better sell those ornaments for enough to where it would be more beneficial to sell those ornaments than it would be to actually invest the time back into your current business to grow that business, to make it better, you know, invest in your marketing invest, and I'm talking a time investment. So instead of investing in making ornaments or creating a skateboard company for the winter, um, would you rather invest in your marketing, getting out, making cold calls, doing all the things that you need to do in order to generate leads, which then turn into customers, which then turn into that turns into money. So it's kind of a scale, right? Like, so does the time you spend over here building your business outweigh a couple bucks making some ornaments? You know, I don't know. Just a thought. Absolutely. Another thing to keep in mind is if you have a list of existing customers, you can leverage all these services you can add on organizing you can add on gift wrapping you could email and text your whole customer list and say hey we're now offering this service for the christmas time or for the winter months only and that is the benefit of having all of your customers in one place right mike yes and you can do that with quote iq yes so download quote iq on the app store and android store today that's it all right back to the list here we go <clears throat> Oh, I skipped a few. Hold on. Furnace repair services. We X that one. That one's no good. Event decoration. During the winter, there will be a lot of parties, whether they're lar large or small, inside or outside. Therefore, if you have a flair for creativity, this is a great business opportunity. Mike, what do you think about event decorating? I think that this is a great one. Um, obviously, there's going to be some, some upfront costs unless – the customer is providing the decorations, but that's not really why they would hire an event decoration specialist, if you will. Um, so, yeah, I think that's a great idea. And it kind of goes hand in hand with holiday lighting. Right. Um, people will pay a premium uh, to have somebody else come and do their holiday lighting. I'm actually having a company uh, come and do mine for Christmas. So excited about that. I could do it. I'm just not going to do it. I don't have to. You know, I can pay somebody to do it and it's going to look just as good. So. That's uh, something that I'm going to have done. Yeah. So, I mean, it is a niche service, but a lot of these are. If only I got paid for all the dog walking and dishes I've done, I'd be a millionaire. <laughs> that's services that you could provide. Yeah. People, look, especially during the winter, Does do people want to go out when it's cold, Mike? I certainly don't. But do dogs need to be walked still? Dogs still need to be walked. Dishes still need to be done. They do. So you could become a dishwasher or a dog walker. Either That's way, right. great ideas. We love them. I hope these right. are on the list. Back to the list. I added event decoration. The next one is organic lip balm. <laughs> I thought you going to read this one. <laughs> yeah, don't even read it. Okay, because, this is the you, know, you can just go to go down and get some Carmex, and it works great. That's true. I'm sure. What is that Carmex? How much does that cost, Mike? Like $2 or what? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Okay, perfect. Let's get back into the list here. All right, so that was a bad one. Um, the next one, gift basket business. I think this could actually be a good one. Um, uh, it is great to give gift baskets uh, for any occasion, but especially for holidays like Christmas and Valentine's Day. Aside from the fact that making gift baskets isn't difficult, anyone can learn how to make them fast and easily. My mom used to do a bunch of gift baskets, and she would do that plastic wrap around them, and she'd have to like uh, do the blow dryer on them and they would always look so good and, and it would just be a great present for people you know Mike yeah I think it's a great idea and actually you know you can go to the dollar store dollar general any of those places and you can buy all of that stuff in bulk right it's so cheap and you can actually make really good looking stuff um, and and sell it I, I think that's a great idea 
Sweet. Let's add it in. Gift basket wrapping. Now, so now for our service providers, you know, some of these aren't really that great, but we're kind of just, you know, we're throwing all these out here. You know, maybe, uh, you know, if you have a wife or you have an aunt or, an, you know, a mom or something, this might be a good idea for some of them as well. Yeah, you know? just put it. You got to put them to work. Like if they're not earning their keep, then you got to put them to work. No one lives for free. Um, no, nobody. Next one is a snow business. I'm assuming they mean snow removal. It's a profitable business idea during the winter and also in the summer to prepare prepare fake snow for occasions such like children's parties, Christmas carol events, and so on. Snow business is a business that is incredibly popular during the winter after the winter. So this they're they're actually blowing snow. snow. And there's big machines and equipment that are involved to make that happen. And I think that that could be a little bit more cost, uh, you know, cost prohibitive than um say a gift basket. So it, it's definitely a business. I don't think it's a side business. Yeah. I think it's too, too much of a, a cost to get into. Yeah. All right. Next, uh, start a blanket uh, or quilt trading business. We're just going to skip right over that one. Yeah. That's horrible. Holiday shopper, a small profitable business in the winter season is assisting people with holiday shopping due to harsh weather and health issues. Some Absolutely. Are unable to shop. Do you think a holiday shopper would be a good, uh, a good thing for people to provide, Mike. I would, I would, I would love to have a personal shopper. Like a holiday shopper is going to make. But I, you know, actually, you know, it, I think, in, and it's kind of sad, but shoppers are actually like that's a legitimate thing. Like people of wealth, they have shoppers that go and they they do all of their purchasing for them, which is awesome. Um, but you know, to some degree, Amazon has kind of replaced a shopper. That's true. I think you know, something that could be close is like Instacart or, um, you know, those grocery delivery services. That's yeah. kind of what I think of when I think of personal shopping. Right. So maybe that's a good little side hustle for you guys. Um, we had a good comment, start a clean company and clean rentals and Airbnbs. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, That's a great, great idea. I actually think that's on the list. We're getting to it. Obviously I think some of these are the bad ideas and we got to get through those to get to the good ones. I hope so, Justin. They're pretty bad so far. Snow sculpture art. Horrible. <laughs> I Just don't think that's a good one. Like, that's not a good one. Okay, next. Uh, winter weather baskets. Uh, many people need some food or other essential items that simply cannot be bought in stores, which can be delivered to their homes, offices. I don't, I don't know, know what, what that this is. means. Okay, we're skipping that one. Snowboard manufacturing. That's about as good as skateboard manufacturing, right? Like... <laughs> That's the, whoever wrote this list is, is less than intelligent. Okay. That one's no good. Personal training services. The first Perfect. one of the year yeah. is when people is when most people start a new exercise routine, which is a great time to start a business in personal training. Although you can run a personal training business all year round, the winter is the best time to establish your business. And the first of the year is even better. So capitalize on that run ads and uh, you know, start, start bulking up, right? You want to get your, uh, get your swell on. So you look good. Um, so you can really impress the people to uh, train them. I think that's one of the prerequisites of having a personal training business is you probably need to look pretty good, right? Yeah, that's why I that's why I don't have a personal training uh, business. <laughs> yeah. uh, let's see. Um, Al Venture bought a two hundred dollar pressure washer, made over fifteen hundred dollars, and only a few jobs. Excellent. Perfect. Um. What's up, guys? I'm a plumber. How about having a small trailer like a 6x10 and having a small boiler and hot water heater? Then you can put in front of a house or driveway so family has heat until repair. It's a cool idea. Yeah, that might not be too bad. We're really looking for ideas to serve the most people that take the least amount of capital uh, to make the most money profitable. Right, Mike? Yes. Okay. My lips um, look really shiny with my balm. Wait, what? My lips are looking <laughs> very shiny. Okay, okay. Um, let's see. What do you say to offer your services to real estate companies or people? Well, you know, having having a sales script, having an idea of the values that you or the values and the benefits that your service provides is kind of the start. You know, um, with a realtor, I would you know just approach them. Uh, probably via email first with an introduction uh, and then follow up with a phone call, introduce yourself, let them know that you, you know, you've got a 
in my particular scenario, a pressure washing business. And, you know, we know how important that having a clean property is when you're trying to sell it. And uh, if, you know, they needed to get anything taken care of on any of their properties, please let us know. Um, you know, we do house washing, concrete, roof cleaning, whatever the case is. Just, you know, let them know what it is. Uh, absolutely. Dewey says, I'm doing snow removal and salting. I think that's coming up on the list. That's definitely one of the better um, winter businesses to start. It is, although in my opinion, and, and yes, by all means, it, this is a great thing, but you're also then relying on Mother Nature to provide you the snow to remove and the salt to you know put down. So yes, it's great, but it's not as reliable as something else that you can kind of count on, like Christmas lighting. I mean, that's something Christmas that lighting. we know is going to be, you know, it's, it's seasonal. It comes every year. People are going to pay. People are going to put up lights. So, you know, if you if you do your prep work and you do your marketing and you get your name out there, then something like that is a hell of a lot better than waiting and hoping it snows. So and we're actually doing a special right now. Um, if you guys get how to wash, you will also get the Christmas light boot camp for free. So if you guys want the five day Christmas light boot camp, that's going to be the second link in the comment section description. If you are interested in that, be sure to check it out. Uh, one more question, and we'll hop back into the list. What's good for SoCal this time of year? Um, solar panel cleaning. Solar panel cleaning, absolutely. Mike, tell them a little bit about solar panel cleaning. Solar panel cleaning is a great service. Now, if you're in the pressure washing business, window cleaning business, then you are probably already set up to provide this service as well as an add-on service. But it can also be a standalone I got Amazon coming. My dogs are probably going to go crazy, um, but it's a great add on service or like I said, a, a business all into its own um, water fed poles, uh, pure water system of some sort and uh, brushes, extension poles. And, and you can be in business. Uh, it doesn't have to be an expensive setup out there on the West Coast, uh, specifically in California. At some point, legislation has been passed where. I don't even know what the day is. 2026 or something, every house, every new construction home that's being built is going to have to have X amount of solar panels on it, regardless if you want them or not. It's it's part of the building code. And so because of that, people are going to have, you know, they're going to have to have them clean. Solar panels need to be cleaned in order to be efficient. So it's a great service. And and out there and, you know, like that side of the world, um, you know, people are more aware of that than we are down here in South Georgia. Absolutely. Um, okay, sweet. Let's get back into the list real quick, you guys. Boom. 38, 36 personal training, 35 hand knitted clothing. I think this kind of falls in line with hand knitted anything. Um, if you're good at maybe it's a good service for your grandmother to offer, you know? Yeah. There's only so many things you can really knit though. Let's be honest. And knitting is a slow process. You know, it's kind of, you know, once the industrial revolution came along, it kind of, uh, the whole hand knitting thing kind of went to the wayside. Fashionable winter accessories for women. Yeah, beautiful. It's a hand knit. Yeah, no. Like, you know all about that. Yeah, no, I, I'm a big fan of accessories. Hot soup dinner business. A hot soup dinner business involves selling hot and delicious soup to people on cold winter nights, to those that need the service of hot soup in their lives at, the at this time of year. No soup for you. Next. <laughs> I don't know if people get the Seinfeld reference. If y'all get the Seinfeld reference, put it in the comment section. I know Kramer did right there. Okay, Alex so, Kramer. That's okay. right. This okay. So this is actually a good one. Home winterization service is important to winterize your home in order to keep it safe, dry, cozy, and trouble free. The business requires plumbing expertise, and it requires you to acquire tools and equipment. Since you have to work at your client's doorstep, it makes sense to establish a home-based business. <laughs> Mike, you want to talk a little bit about? Yeah, I think that this business? is this would be a great service to add on to any uh, service business, right? Like you've already got the contacts, you've got the customer base. Uh, and now because you are a good business person and you're good at marketing, you've got all of your email sequences in place to where you're touching these people uh, throughout the course of a year after you've provided your service. And because you're in, you know, in their inbox, if you will, um, you're then able to say, hey, also, it, winter's coming up, and I uh, just want to let you know that we offer this service. We're going to come, and we're going to you know, make sure your pipes are drained, your irrigation system is cleared. and do. I, I, I live in, like I said, South Georgia, so we don't have to deal with this, but I'm sure there's a, a list of things that need to be taken care of uh, in order for a, uh, the winter, you know, especially up north. 
And we'll probably make a video on that. Maybe the next time we go live, Mike, we could just talk about all the different things that you can do to winterize a home, you know? Yes. I've got several friends um, in Alaska, Eskimos, that um, we could talk with. Perfect. We'll bring them on. Okay. Home winterization service, definitely a good one. Probably one of the better ones that we've gotten so far. Yeah. Uh, greeting card making kind of falls in line with a lot of other stuff. Good, yeah, good for your kids. Walmart kind of has or Walmart. Um, Hallmark. No, Hallmark cards, but I'm thinking of uh, who sells Hallmark cards, Mike? Walgreens. I think Walgreens kind of has a cornering on the uh, greeting card market. I'm just going to say that. Yeah, I think that's a, a safe assessment. Exercise and fitness instructor. I don't know how this one got put in, too, because we already had personal training. But, yeah. Okay. So, um, all right. So that, you know, we already have that on the list. Christmas tree delivery. Not a bad one. But people also want to pick their tree. That's right? what I was going to say. I don't I don't honestly trust anybody else to pick my tree. Um, but we also have a, a fake tree. Oh, you do? Okay, so y'all don't even do real trees. Anymore. No, I like the tree. It's awesome. You, it, you plug it in uh, and it lights up. It's already got the lights on it. And lights, on it's, it. it's amazing. And every year when I do it, it still is amazing to me because it's like, like one section, I one section and then I plug it and then that section lights up and then the top. It's amazing. It's perfect. It's perfect. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Christmas tree delivery, kind of tough. Now, if you have a Christmas tree farm, it might be something that you could do. You know, somebody pulls up with a with a car, they pick their tree. Hey, we do Christmas tree delivery. Yeah, Otherwise, exactly. A makeup artist. Yeah, I do this on the side. I think it's a great one. Okay, so we're skipping that one. Yeah. Sale of used snowboards. Hey, that this is this is a great uh, deal if you live in you know an area that has got uh, mountains and you know no, I'm serious like. We, we go skiing in the winter and um, there are all kinds of little snowboard shops and things like that. And, and I'm sure you snowboards are a really big thing. I mean, if, if you're going up skiing for a week and you start throwing out, you know, money every day for rentals and boots and all that stuff, it's not a bad idea. I, I think that's could be something. And, you know, it's just like flipping couches or anything else that you see about, like, I mean, you can make some decent money doing this. That's but why I think something like that it's a year long thing, like in the spring and in the summer when people are like cleaning stuff out and getting rid of stuff. I mean, you got to be constantly scanning and being prepared. Like this isn't something that you just be like, Oh, I'm going to start selling you snowboards. You have to have snowboards to sell. So could be oh, something good. People buy golf carts. They put out signs and stuff to buy used golf carts and they just fix them up and then resell them. Yeah. Like year round. Dewey had a great idea of selling firewood. Um, Selling firewood is a great one. I'm not sure if it's going to be on this list, but it really should be. That is a good one, Dewey. Yeah. So if you guys have ever thought about doing selling firewood, uh, that's a great way to go. Um, a cake shop. I don't think so. No. All right. Let's skip that one. Aaron service for seniors. You know, it's kind of like a personal shopper. And I think, you know, kind of a niche service. Maybe if you were to get in with uh, nursing homes, retirement communities, things like that that could really be something that could could take off. Yeah, you could go in there and say, I'm going to offer a service where I just go in and pick stuff up for anybody who needs yeah. something. Uh, the other thing is, is just like handyman services in general, you know, um, there's a lot of stuff that people don't want to do or they need help with. You know, maybe you got something heavy in your house, you need help moved or whatever. I knew a guy on next door that that's all he would do is just kind of offer little services uh, to help people out. And he made a great amount of money because people would be like, hey, just come over and help me build this bed you yeah. know and he would just come build the bed there was a uh, a couple an older couple they still live in my neighborhood but every year uh they would and they were a customer of mine um but they would call and they'd be like uh hey we need help moving boxes out of our attic for christmas uh and that's not something that i'm interested in doing or utilizing my guys because it just from an economic standpoint it didn't make sense but my son who's 21 now um, he would go up there every year and he'd take them out and then he'd help put them back in and they paid him a bunch of money. So I think stuff like that, if you market it right. And, and again, you know, getting on these Facebook groups and for your community and your neighborhood next door, places like that, you could really, I think, uh, generate some, uh, some decent money doing these things. Not to mention if you're able to leverage your situation, let's say you are a high school kid or a college kid and you just want to make a few bucks. Hey, you put it out there. Hey, I'm a college kid. I'm willing to do side jobs, whatever you guys need help with. Please give me a call. I'd be happy to come out and help. And then from there, whatever comes in, you just kind of filter it. Like if it's something you don't want to do or you don't have the expertise to do, just let them know. This isn't something that I can handle. But then if it is, 
just go take care of it. This is what I told my brother to do. My brother got fired from a, a, a store he was working at. I shouldn't say fired. He quit. Um, and uh, I said, dude, nice. all you got to do is post in free groups and just say that you'll do side work for people. And people will reach out and say, hey, I got a bunch of trash in my backyard. Can you just pull it to the front for me? Or you know, Just little stuff that you wouldn't think that, you know, that you could offer. But people How did that work out for young Matt? He didn't do it. Yeah, he, no. uh, he now works at the YMCA, but uh, good. he's doing good now. Good. He likes the YMCA. He'd be a good personal trainer type because he likes to work out a lot. Yeah. All right, back to the list. Uh, sleigh rides, Mike. You know, if you've got a sleigh and you've got a means to pull your sleigh, um, I think this could be something. Now, I don't know exactly where you would like, you know, like you're going to go to individuals' houses. Maybe if there was like some sort of, you know, an event, you know, like a, a, a winter festival or something like that, then you could offer a sleigh ride service. Like that could be something. But I just think like if you're just an independent sleigh ride, it might be a little more difficult. Absolutely. I want to highlight Dewey's comment here. He said, I made a, I've made some killer money doing handyman work before starting my pressure washing business. I was doing work for the old Handy app. You guys can check that out, Handy app. Uh, and on my own, it got my business started. So there you go. Another testimonial that doing handyman work, doing side work for people like that um, can be very beneficial. Top back into here. Sleigh rides is a no-go. Party planning, another probably no-go. Like, I don't know. What yeah, do I think, think you, you, you probably a little bit more credibility in some some referrals and and uh, you know a, the ability to show that you're actually decent. I think that that's required. Right. Absolutely. I do want to say one other thing before we go to the next one. Mark Cuban used to. I think I, I saw this uh, clip whenever he was in college. He um, would throw these big parties and he would have like a um, an entry fee and he made a killing. I think he made like enough money to like pay his way through college by just like throwing college parties and having a pay per head type deal. And that's why he's a billionaire now. Yeah, he is. He's uh, he's got a lot of money now. So uh, we could take a note from Mark Cuban. Let's see what else is on this list. Um, home holiday decorating services, Christmas lights, right, Mike? Yep. I think, you know, this is good. We've got friends that um, my wife is phenomenal with, uh, decorating and our attic is just full of Christmas, uh, decorations, but we've got a bunch of friends that pay people to come in and decorate, you know, they bring in all their stuff and they just decorate your house. And, you know, again, it, it kind of goes back to like Christmas lighting, like Glenn Jernigan, he's got an entire warehouse full of these, you know, giant candy canes and, you know, gingerbread men and all kinds of crazy Christmas decorations, um, and all the lights and all the other things that you would need. Uh, and I think for this type of business, that would be the same. Like, you know, you got to have a, a little bit of uh, inventory overhead, if you will. Right. Or you can just go decorate with, with what people have. I think Mike referred to, you know, somebody in the neighborhood needed help taking all the decorations down. Right. Maybe they need help putting everything back up. So even just the moving of boxes and everything else, you could probably help with that and make some money. Yeah. Also, we had a guy that uh, joined the Christmas light boot camp and he scheduled thirty thousand dollars in jobs. So. For anybody who doesn't think that Christmas lighting is a good way to go, the ticket on that is usually like over a thousand on average. Yeah, because the people that are going to hire you to do this have got money and they're not afraid to uh, trade their money for your time. Absolutely. So once again, if you have a list of previous clients, adding these service on uh, services is going to be incredibly helpful. If you need something to help track your customers, quote IQ, check it out. First link in the comment section description. Mitchell says, last year I made cutting boards and made some good money. That's both fun and you can make good money doing it. And if you know how to do that um, that marketing, that Facebook marketing that can really get people's attention and, and say, wow, this is a great you know, thing that I could get somebody, you can make a killing with it, you know? Now that's one of those that's that's you know probably more time heavy than it is profit. You know what I mean? So kind of something that you want to weigh you want to get the most profit for the least amount of right. time so anyway let's hop back in the list um sell room heaters i think target does this already yeah i think a lot of places actually sell room heaters you could open an ice rink yeah that's a great idea next okay we have an ad a laundry service you can find you can find a niche within a cleaning business, especially during the summer months when many. No, something like care. this, like this, could be a great add-on service for like somebody that does like interior home cleaning, like a maid service, oh, something true. like that. I think that would be great. Um, 
I've got, we've got a friend who owns uh, a dry cleaning to your door uh, business and they come, they've got a relationship with a, uh, you know, like a dry cleaner and they just provide the transportation. So I take my shit, I drop it outside my door every Tuesday. They Wait, take it. Really? Yeah. And then on Wednesdays they bring, they hang my hanging stuff, you know, like my nice shirts and pants and whatnot back on my door. Is and this so I'm the paying dry cleaner specifically that does this? Yeah. Well, this is, this is like, if you will, an Uber, right? So they have a relationship with the people that actually do the cleaning. So they're just bringing stuff to the cleaners. They probably get a discounted rate for the actual ser- the cleaning service, but then they charge me for the cleaning service and the, you know, the neat, the, the delivery and the pickup and it's worth it. That is a good idea. Cause dry cleaning, that's a pain point for people. People don't have to go do their dry cleaning. Mike, what do you get in dry clean? Just like shirts and stuff. And just like my quote IQ shirts. I love it. When, I love when it. I'm when I'm not on on YouTube, I actually sometimes you know wear nice clothes. Nice. I had no idea. I'd never see you other than on YouTube. So uh, this is good to know. This is uh, not true. You've seen me dress up. So that's something good that you guys can do. Be a middleman for a business that already exists. Like imagine if you went to a laundromat and said, "Hey." I want to offer a delivery service. It's at no cost to you guys. You guys are going to make the exact same amount of money that you already make on these customers. And you'll probably make more because they're they're going to get the service done more often. All you got to do is just message them and say, hey, we're offering a delivery service. I'll get a small cut off the delivery. Everybody wins. Right, Mike? Yeah. I mean, that's Uber Eats. That's, you know, every, every food delivery thing right now that's so popular. God, my kids spend a fortune having stuff brought to them yeah one other good idea i don't know if this is on the list but leaf removal if you guys aren't yes. doing leaf removal add it to the business right that's it that's a good one okay perfect let's hop back into the list uh we got a couple more here um a uh, wreath selling once again handcrafted wreaths generate a, a, a lot of income <laughs> i don't think so but that's what it says here yeah all right we're next in this one fencing the oh, i love of- fencing do you really yeah, I have a sword right there, and I fence all the time. I thought this was talking about putting up fences. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> I don't think either is going to be very profitable for like you know short term, you know winter style type of uh, of business. That's right. Okay, so no fencing. We're going to X that one. A snowshoe rental. Um, I don't think that this is a good one either, man. This is full of bad ones, but we're yeah. But you know, like the the snowshoe rental, like that's a viable business, um, in areas where snowshoes are in demand, right? But it, I don't think it's you know, it's not like you're just going to have like your full time gig, and then during the winter when things slow down for that particular service that you're providing, that then all of a sudden you're going to transition to snowshoe rentals, right? Unless that is a a business that you have established and it is seasonal. And you know that, you know, from, from, I don't even know what the winter seasons are, you know, April to whatever, this is what you're going to be doing then from whatever, October to January, you're going to be doing this. Some of these are viable businesses, but not for supplemental income during your, your slow season. Absolutely. Um, Okay. Chimney sweep services. I know nothing about chimney sweeping. Some of these require a lot of expertise, like chimney sweeping and fencing. I don't know if I'd just hop right in and start offering that as a side business. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. We're going to go to the next one. Uh, blogging. You could start a blog if you want to. Sure. You're yeah, not going to make any money. money. Do from the computer. We really probably should have gone to, I was checking out the side ones, top 100 service business ideas, but uh, we'll do that on another day. Yeah. Um, Restaurant from home. The winner considered, uh, this winner considered turning your passion for food cooking into a business. Food always remains in demand. So one of my uh, kids, friends, mothers uh, does a, she makes, their last name is Caparelli, right? And she is a phenomenal chef and she makes lasagna and she makes other Italian dishes in these big, beautiful trays. And like once, I think it's once a month, I get an email and uh, you know, it's like, Hey, it's time. And these are the three dishes that you can choose from. It's like a cheese, a meat, and then, you know, like a, a veggie of some sort. 
and, and you place your order and then she gives you a time and, and you go to her house and you pick them up, right? Delicious. And every single time that she would do this, I would email her back and I would, you know, get, get a, a platter. But unfortunately, because I'm doing this stupid low carb diet, I, I, I don't, don't do it anymore. Oh, my, come on. That just goes back to the benefit of having your customers in a database and keeping in touch with them because she's yeah. selling, she was selling Mike every single month on just a meal. Um, yeah. And it was something she enjoyed doing. How yeah. did, how did you ultimately hear about her doing this? Mike, was it kind of a word of mouth thing? Did she tell you? Yeah, no, she, so her son played uh, lacrosse with my son and they were sitting behind us and she was talking about making her own homemade cheese. And I was like, you do what? And she's like, yeah, because I put it on the lasagna that I sell. And I was like, um, I need to be on that list. There you go. And that's how she got Mike. Yeah. Um, let's see. The power washing tricks chick said at this list, I would rather hear Mike's top 12 profitable winter business ideas. <laughs> we'll keep that one for next time. This that's was just kind of something fun that we were doing. <laughs> that's going to be next time. We'll go. Through okay. My- so real quick, uh, yeah. the power washing chick here. Um she she's popped up on a couple like comments in, in some of my videos. And I was like, what is this all about? And so I went to her channel and it, it, it's, it's very interesting. She's got a cool story. Um, and she really shares a bunch of stuff that, um, you know, about, you know, kind of her situation, why she's starting, how she's going about it. Very cool. So I would check that out. You guys go check out the power washing chick. If you haven't already, we appreciate her hanging out on the live today. Um, Mitchell says I'm smoking turkeys for Thanksgiving and Christmas. Already have 70 people to cook for Thanksgiving at 150 a piece, dude. Holy smokes, that's pretty good, Mitchell. So what you've got? He must have some giant like trailer type smoker that's operation. Awesome. That's cool. Good for you, man. He's I like to deep fry my turkeys. Me too. They're delicious, dude. A fried turkey, dude. Forget oh, it's about the it. best. It's the there's no way that he's bringing them that hot. Like it's got to maybe they got to heat it in the oven for like ten minutes or something, huh, Mike? Yeah, I don't know how long it takes to smoke a turkey, but if like if this if he had one of those like huge smokers, right? Like those, then I mean, he you does could, real you could, smokers. Yeah, load up a ton of turkeys on that bad boy. All right, we're going to run through the rest of this list pretty quick. Let's see. Eggnog, no. Delivery business. We kind of talked about delivery stuff, yeah. you know, DoorDash, Uber Eats, things of that nature. Right. Also with the laundry. Um, selling firewood. This Good, is a dude. great one. Yeah. Uh, in places with freezing winters, however, it would be wise to consider this uh, winter business idea. In most homes, wood stoves are used to keep the heat in. Another thing that you can do is combine – the delivery business with the firewood business and have people on a subscription service where every week you go drop off a few bundles of firewood and it's just a recurring um, expense, right? Mike? That's a great idea. I would pay for that. Absolutely. It would be, it would be awesome to have some fresh firewood delivered to the house. So that's something you guys can definitely just sit, uh, consider boat cleaning and man- and maintenance. It is not uncommon for people to hire companies to maintain and clean their boats in a similar manner as they, as they hire companies to service and clean their cars. A good idea at the end of the summer is to clean, detail, and service boats. Another good thing is you're not really running the boat in the winter, so that might not be a bad idea, huh? You go out there, you start it. Yeah, you know, and I think I think a lot of this, it has to do with where you're at, too. Um, like the boat where we keep our boat, they do everything for us, right? It's a, and, and it is. I pay to have them keep it there. They get it out. They fuel it up. They clean it. I don't have to do anything. Um, it's the best. And – the lady who makes the lasagna, her son works there and brings the boat out for me sometimes. Mike, truth, truth seeker said, I guess deep fried turkey is low carb. <laughs> I get one day. I get one day where Let I Let him have a day. Food. Come on. Dude, Thanksgiving, Here. I'm eating mashed potatoes and rolls. I'm going to I'm gonna try to put on the 40 pounds that I've lost in one day. Let's go. Come on. Let's see if Mike can do it. We'll do a live after that and we'll, uh, we'll weigh him out live. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, let's smash the rest of this list real quick. Towing service. Wait, hold on. 200-gallon okay, propane tank converted into a smoker. Uh, they only take about five to six hours to cook. and they all. So tell me how many you can fit in at one time. This is completely off topic, but now I'm interested. We want to know more about it. Because I want to see, like, you know. Dude, 150 a pop at 70 people. That's a good little uh, side service. Just for two days, Thanksgiving and Christmas. Obviously, there's probably prep work that. Is involved, you know, and he's probably going to store the turkeys, right? You got to go to the store, buy them, 
Storum. Um, that's Storm. like, dude, that's ten, ten thousand five hundred dollars. Dude, ten grand for frying some turkeys? Come yeah, on. I don't even know how much a turkey costs. Let's leave a thumbs up on this video if you guys got some good, uh, some good ideas so far. This alone is a is a decent idea. Frying turkeys for people. Really, all this comes down to is just making people's lives easier and offering value. And you are paid in direct proportion to the amount of value that you provide. The more value that you can provide, the more that you will be paid. So that's why with like some of these knitting services and ornament services, it's like there's not a lot of value there. Right. But when it comes to like firewood and delivering it and like turkeys, obviously, everybody's got to have a turkey for Christmas and Thanksgiving. Some people don't know how to cook. There's more value there. and Therefore, He's paid more money, 150 a turkey. Yeah. Okay, let's hop back in. Um, towing services, Mike. I don't even know. Uh, good idea to offer towing services to your customers. If you've got a tow truck, I think it's a great idea. Okay, so most people don't have a tow truck. We'll skip no. it. Offer snow removal services. All right, maybe this list is in order because seven snow removal services, that is pretty good. What's a, What better time to think about? Winter business ideas and start your own snow removal business than now. Got a lot of slopes in your yard? Consider offering snow removal services if you live in a snow-prone area. Yeah. Mike, one of your rebuttals to that is you are reliant. Yeah, on- you're reliant on Mother Nature. You know, this this could be a good, you know, I, there are multiple, there are different levels of snow removal, right? You've got guys that have got trucks with snow plows on them and they're they're doing parking lots and they're they're scaling, right? They, they're doing large areas. You've got guys with the little push snow blowers and they will do residential stuff. And then you've got folks with shovels and they'll get out there and bust their back and do it, right? So there's all kinds of entry, you know, entry points. Um, and and this could be something that, you know, if, if you don't have a ton of money to invest, you know, you can invest your sweat and your blood and your tears and your back and go make some money. So with every single one of these services, you guys have to keep in mind that it's just like any other business. It might take a few years to get the ball rolling, but it's always it compounds every single year. Usually within like the first five years, you can double every single year. So, you know, maybe you, you invest that you invest in the equipment year one, you know, into your snow removal business. And then year two, it kind of doubles. You get twice as many customers and it just it all snowballs, if you will. Right, Mike? Yeah. OK, so keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Also, keep track of customers. If you guys don't have anything to keep track of customers with, check out Quote IQ first link in the comment section and the description. Offer snow removal services. Next one is a coffee service. I don't think that one's a good one. No, you know, I think Starbucks has done a really good job. Duncan has done a good job, right? I've got, I use K cups. So, I right. Love and so, just like we talked about, you know, how big of a problem are you solving? Coffee services, anybody can make coffee in their house. It's not a big problem. There's no money there. All right, next one. Pumpkin Candle spice making. coffee. Can we talk about that for a minute? Can we talk about what? Pumpkin spice coffee. I love it. Didn't I've never, I never had it until the other day. My wife bought a box, like, you know, for the Keurig. Right. And uh, I had one. I'm drinking like three a day now. Was it life changing or what? Yeah, it's the best. Do you drink your coffee black, Mike? Or are you putting stuff in it? I put a little uh, two Splenda. Two Splendas, that's it. Yeah. So you can taste it. Yes. Com- do you do you know what community coffee is? No. Community coffee is like a local, like that's what the lo- everyone drinks locally, and they made a Mardi Gras coffee, and it was delicious, man. I would, I'll have to send you some. Please do. Love- oh, okay, sweet. So there we go. Um. Let's see the power washer chick. What's the brand, Mike, for the pumpkin spice coffee? Starbucks. Starbucks. Or, or as my daughter likes to say, Starbies. There we go. Candle making, not really solving a big problem there. So we're going to just skip that one. A cleaning service, definitely one of the better ones on yeah. the list. Cleaning and, you know, service. like it, cleaning, cleaning can be, you, you, you can, anything. can, anything. Right. But a cleaning service. Right. Like uh, I think this is really a, a great business because there really is zero overhead. Like our cleaning lady, she brings in a little crew and like they use our stuff. Right. They bring in a, a couple buckets with some things, but like they use our sprays and our cleaners and, and all kinds of things. So um, it's very little overhead. It's just about marketing, getting your name out there and, and then you can, you know, move forward. Right. And that's what we all have. We all have pressure washing services, which are cleaning services, gutter cleaning services, roof cleaning services, driveway cleaning services. That's basically all this is, is just a bunch of different cleaning services. Right. Yeah. And so you're talking about an upsell early on in the list. We had organizing 
for a cleaning business, if you were to offer organizing, that would be a great upsell. However, you get into a situation where you only have so much, um, you can only work so many hours in a day. And that's when you start to have to bring in people because a lot of these services, there's not a lot of people providing them or a lot of people marketing well for them. So especially for a cleaning company, they can book up super fast. And that's why you need to have the ability to hire on and and scale that way because you only have so many hours in a day that you can clean stuff, you know? Yeah, and there's two ways to scale, right? Scale with dollars, right? So if you've only got X amount of hours per day that you can be productive and, and generate income, um, that then you do what? You raise your prices and you make more money or you hire somebody and scale that way. So there, there's multiple ways to go about scaling. Um, and, and I'm, you know, it's, raising your prices really kind of alienates, um, you know, a lot of customers that, you know, I don't know, I just. That, Very that, true. You know. if, you, if you lack the ability to hire and and because it gets hard to manage crews and, you know, you got people cleaning houses and you really don't have a lot of quality control there. But like, Mike, you've done a really good job relinquishing some of that. Maybe that's something we could talk about in another video. But another way to scale, like you mentioned, is just raising prices. I'm getting a call. All right. Here we go. Back to the list. Cleaning services. Let me swap over. Uh, Dewey says, oh, damn, Mike got a taste of that bougie pumpkin spice life. <laughs> I am bougie. <laughs> uh, number three, winter, winter auto mechanic. During the winter, vehicles are often problematic due to harsh weather conditions. A strong alternator system that can jumpstart your car will be needed if you have a good background in mechanic services. This is a great idea and something that actually Dewey had put in the comments. Oh, it's right there. It says, I'll throw in towing idea, do battery jump offs. Buy an awesome, uh, you know, NOCO jump box and make some quick, easy money. Batteries die every day in the cold weather. Um, this is a great idea. Okay, great idea. So if you guys, you know, he talked about the towing idea, doing battery jump offs and, and marketing on Facebook. Not right. a bad idea. The only problem with this that I would be able to see is, is you're needed immediately, right? Like unless, unless they're at their house, okay? And then I don't know. Like you just well, need to it, be it, called immediately. Right. It's a, it's a great idea. And obviously, you know, every, we could poke holes in absolutely anything, but if you've got a box and you've got the ability to go and do this and you have the ability to charge what your time is worth, uh, then it makes sense. If not, you know, if you, if like, what does the market bear, right? Like, what are you willing to pay to have somebody jump your car? Like if you're in dire, you know, situation, then you're willing to pay more. Um, right. The so, bigger the problem you solve, the more you're compensated. So for somebody who can't get to work, yeah. that is huge. So definitely a good idea. That's another one. I'm going to write it on the list real quick. Uh, jump off services, which is the auto mechanic. Dude, if I wish that I was – I don't wish that I was good mechanically, but I wish that I knew people that were good mechanically because I could probably make them so much money with just – mechanic services to people's houses if you could do oil change subscriptions where you just come to somebody's house and change their oil in the driveway so they never have to leave can you imagine that mike like yeah. how big of a pain point is it to like have to monitor when you need an oil change and then you got to schedule it out in your day go to you know five minute oil change or whatever sit in the line like it's just such a pain right hey boss man can you uh, go ahead and uh, hit that uh, left turn signal all right uh beep that horn twice for me put it in reverse but keep your foot on the brake I've done That's it a right. few times. And this, dude, he's, Mike knows it because Mike gets 20 oil changes a month. But how cool would it be, Mike, if someone offered a service and you have five cars at the house on like at a one time period, yeah. they came and did five oil changes for you like that. How crazy would that be? I would love it. So if you guys, if anyone's mechanically, you know, proficient out there, utilize my Facebook ad strategy and all you would have to do is oil changes and you could upsell or cross sell other services you could do just like just like they do with the with the air filters with the window wipers you know what i mean and just have everybody on a subscription model you know yeah. hey you need to get your wiper change every six months we're going to just do it for you we'll add it to the bill so this list must be going um get better and better i think ski rentals it's only for certain areas obviously right mike yeah. So, yeah, ski run was okay. Never mind. Uh, a Christmas tree farm is number one. I should have built some anticipation for the number one best winter business. Well, we would have all been disappointed. Uh, now, a Christmas, a Christmas tree farm, you know, it's a great idea. It takes a little while to, to grow trees. 
So um, this is kind of a long-term strategy um, to look at, but definitely a viable uh, solution in say 20 or 25 years. That's right. That's not how long it takes to grow. Is it, is it how long it takes? I don't know, Justin. I'm not. A like, how long does it take to grow? It's got, it can't be take more than a year, huh? Oh, I don't know. Maybe it does. Dude, are they planting Christmas trees like 20 years out? That's incredible. If so, well, I've got I've got people that I know that that sell timber. Right. And, and they've got, you know, thousands and thousands of acres of, of timber and they'll go and they'll cut, you know, a, a a section and it's, and it's an annual thing. So they'll cut this section, they plant, those start growing. And then the next year in five years, whatever the case is, they cut another, they replant that. And so it's constant. So there's always timber growing, trees growing, but yeah, it's a, uh, I don't know how long it takes though for a Christmas tree. That's a tough business to be in. So that was the list of the 52 ways to make uh, money in the winter. Let's go ahead and run through the best right quick. We got leaf removal was one of the best ones. Firewood was one of the best ones. Snow removal, uh, jumping off services or other mechanical services. Gift wrapping was a great one that you guys can offer. Professional organizers, um, a cleaning service, event decoration, gift basket wrapping, holiday shopper, personal training, home winterization services, and cleaning services. Those were all some really good ones, as well as you guys threw some some great ones into the chat as well. Um, as we mentioned, uh, the spring will be coming back around. If you guys want to win a pressure washing business starter kit, check out the first link in the comment section in description. All you got to do is download Quote IQ, leave a review, and send us an email, and you'll be entered to win. Mike, any closing thoughts on uh, the 52 ways to make money in the winter? I do. Um, for a Christmas tree to grow to full size, which is approximately six feet, it takes 11 years. That's incredible. The power wash chick said, Mike, we don't have 25 years. <laughs> I, I hope I do. Um, but I definitely don't want to be selling Christmas trees in 25 years. We have one other good idea. Truth Seeker says, how about a traveling toenail trimming service for the elderly? That sounds horrible and disgusting. Wow. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. We're going to try to bring you guys some um, more like this. Let me see this one. I was told due to the 2008 recession, we had a shortage of Christmas trees in 2020. Due to the inability to plant them in 2008, could be BS, but I thought it was interesting. Absolutely. Fake Christmas trees have definitely ruined the market. And that's because they're more convenient. They're easier. You store them in the attic. You know, you don't have to go anywhere and get them or anything, right? Yeah. Now, you can't copy the smell of a good real Christmas tree, though. You cannot. Mitchell says he's going to start planting today. And in 11 <laughs> years, he is going to start a Christmas tree farm. <laughs> Good luck to you, Mitchell. Dude, you can only sell a Christmas tree for like a couple hundred bucks. Can you imagine growing something for three years for a couple hundred buck return? 11 years. Oh, yeah, exactly. And anyway. All right. Um, that was the video, you guys. We are going to make some more of these, telling you guys how y'all can start uh, some of these businesses. And so if you guys enjoyed it, definitely hit the thumbs up button for me. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like I said before, we are running a special. If you haven't got the How to Wash course already, you get the Christmas light course for free. It's going to show you how to make at least $10,000 your first season. And right now is prime time for making money with Christmas lights. So if you guys haven't already, second link in the comment section description. Mike, any other uh, things we want to say before we roll out? I don't think so. Absolutely. Interior painting services. That is a great one as well. Yes. So anyway, all right. My name is Justin. It's forever self-employed. Until next time, hustle hard and get that money. Mike, we need a word of the day. What's the word of the day? 11 years. 11 years is the word of the day. If you made it this far in the video, comment down below 11 years and I'll hashtag you a real one. You'll be a super real one because you'll have made it an hour into this 52 ways to make money in the winter. My name is Justin, forever self-employed. Uh, whatever. I'll catch you guys in the next video. All right. Peace.